Pawn Stars is one of the biggest successes in reality television. The show features three generations of Harrisons running their pawn shop and interacting with random guests, carrying some unique and valuable items. It's a reality show filmed at Rick Harrison's Gold and Silver Pawn Shop in Las Vegas. Rick Harrison and his immense knowledge on just about everything give great insight and credibility into a show that's really about watching people make wild deals over crazy items. Just because something's marked 14 karat gold doesn't mean it's 14 karat gold. I can mark the, the, I can stamp the bumper. I can stamp the bumper of my truck platinum. That doesn't make it so. From muskets to coins, autographs to vintage cars, the team has the cash and the charisma to woo shop customers and TV audiences from around the world. It's been a home run for the History Channel, but success in business doesn't mean perfection. Over the last 10 years, our favorite dealers in one of the most famous pawn shops in the world have made some massive purchases, but some pretty bad judgments as well, leaving their shop short for different amounts of money. Let's take a look at seven times the sellers managed to scam the pawn shop with fake items and love the results of their appearance on the show. Every pawn shop makes incredible efforts to ensure that the items it takes on complies with state and local laws and regulations. However, in one episode from season 7, the guys from the Pawn Stars ended up buying a 2000 year old Tyrian shekel, a coin which historians believe Judas would have been traded when he betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Unfortunately, a detective arrived at the shop to inform them that the coin was stolen. However, not by the seller who was featured in the episode, but by a previous owner of the coin. In the end, they were able to keep it because the original owner had been compensated by his insurance policy. 10,000 plus. Say hello to my little boots. <laughs> yes. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Thanks, Rick. Have a good one, man. You too. But the purchase didn't have a happy ending after all, since it turned out Rick had paid way too much for the coin by giving $1,600. In spite of its rarity, a shekel of tire would usually only be worth around $1,200, but that one had lost a lot of value because it had been previously cleaned. Though a large number of memes prove how much Rick loves calling in a buddy expert for every little thing, every now and then he fails to do so, which often turns out to be a mistake. Authenticity is a major factor in having a successful business in this particular industry, especially when someone offers you a piece that was popular two centuries ago. However, when in a fifth season episode called Corey's Big Play, a seller brought in a supposed 19th century Wells Fargo strongbox, Rick trusted his feeling and gave the man $450 for it, something he believed may have even greater value. Unfortunately for Rick, the box was hardly authentic. According to the fan favorite expert Mark, the Beard of Knowledge, that particular item was one of the most widely faked ones out there, so the box was a complete fantasy piece. Rick should have known better too, especially because the seller had also brought the box stuffed with two ball and chain sets he thought were artifacts from the Yuma and Folsom prisons, which he immediately recognized as fakes. As you probably already know, Rick is a great admirer of guitars, so you would think there's no way he could ever buy a fake instrument. Well, that's where you would be wrong. A musician called Vic Flick came to the pawn shop during season 8 looking to sell his 1961 Fender Stratocaster. For everyone unfamiliar with his work, Vic is a British session guitarist who worked with many popular singers and musicians, but he became world famous as the original player of the iconic James Bond theme. So, it comes as no surprise that Vic was hoping he could get a decent amount of money for it, and he was right since he made out exceptionally well when Rick agreed on paying him $55,000, thinking it had such great history. However, since the guitar didn't have a case, it couldn't be seen as the original anymore. That meant that it was justly possible the guitar might not even be the same guitar the famous James Bond theme had been played with. After remaining in the shop for too long with a price tag of $90,000, Rick decided to sell it on an auction, unfortunately for a much lower price. Price. Sports memorabilia is an enormous part of the pawn shop business, and from trophies, bats, autographs, to even rings and uniforms, there's often a famous and enormously lucrative market. In an episode called Free Willy that aired in August of 2012, Corey made a deal with a man called John for $31,000 for what he believed was a game-worn Willie Mays San Francisco Giants uniform from 1961. But the red flags with this one were apparent from the start. 
Even Chumley managed to observe the obvious. Willie Mays is one of the biggest baseball players in history, who was sliding around in the dirt and the grass a lot. So Chumley immediately found it strange that the jersey was taintless. Not only was it not game worn, but an authenticator later speculated that it never even belonged to the player in the first place. Nevertheless, even without the certificate of authentication, Corey decided to go for it. In the end, they only ended up getting $19,200 for it at auction around two years later. One of baseball's all-time greatest stars, Shoeless Joe Jackson, is a favorite among high-paying collectors, especially when it comes to items with the illiterate player's signature. So, when a customer came into his store with a book signed by the famous player, Rick threw all the caution away. He decided he didn't need any kind of advice and bought the item for $13,000, but only after the customer had produced a letter of authentication. Shoeless Joe Jackson signed by his wife. He was embarrassed how bad his handwriting was on his, the only thing he could write, so that's why you never saw it. Okay. So this could really be an amazing signature. Moreover, Rick knew that Joe's signature was one of the most faked, but even his gut couldn't stop him from buying it. However, it turned out Rick's gut was right, because two experts confirmed the same. After hearing from his book expert, Rebecca, that the signature was likely a fake, Rick sent it out to another authenticator, who repeated the bad news, even claimed it was a poor forgery as well. It was really rare for someone to swindle the old man. However, that happened one time and it didn't end quite well. In 2014, Richard accepted to host a party for members of the notorious Vargo's motorcycle gang, to which he was connected by his son Joseph. He was presented with a project by two people who claimed to be from a motorbike community that liked helping people, and after some negotiation, decided to host a Valentine's Day party at his Las Vegas home. Little did he know that the reality was far from the concept they presented him. Instead of going to charity, the money went to individuals who had troubles with the law. They redirected all the funds to pay lawyers for the members that committed various crimes and cover the legal costs for 32 arrested members. After the incident, his son Rick said that the old man just thought he was lending his fame to a charitable cause, but that he wasn't surprised much by the method that they had used on him. In the very first season of Pawn Stars, Chumley became confident and felt that he had been working long enough in the shop that he could buy some cool stuff. So he decided to purchase a piece of art for $300. Needless to mention, it was fake, which annoyed the old man so much, he said that Chumley shouldn't ever deal in art since he couldn't even tie his shoes. Instead of becoming angry with him, Rick decided to try and teach Chum how to distinguish fake etching from a real one. He began by telling him how the artist uses a copper plate, puts a layer of wax over it and then uses a metal pen to scratch through. Once the picture is finished, he takes the wax off and puts ink on the picture that can now be seen on the copper plate. In the end, he presses a piece of paper to transfer the picture onto it, which is precisely where Chumley needed to look for the traces. The pressing would have left the dent in the paper since the copper was pressed into it with a great weight. Not only did the etching miss the dent, but it was also obvious that the quality of the paper wasn't good since it should have been acid free and not turn yellow. Hello. The next case regarding stolen diamonds wasn't something that occurred while Pawn Stars was on the air, but it's worth bringing up since it happened to the experienced and hugely skilled Rick, and it was painful. It all happened in 2010 when a well-suited man came to the shop with a pair of diamond earrings. Though Rick asked all the right questions, apparently the man was even better prepared since he did a great job in giving the right answers. After the man even gave him a receipt, Rick decided to pay him $40,000 for the earrings, only to find out the very next day that the diamonds had been stolen and that the police needed to recover the goods, leaving Rick $40,000 short and, according to his own words, with the biggest bust he had ever had in the pawn shop. 